Is this the best graphics card for 1080p gaming? Let's find out. $230, top-notch 1080p gaming performance, and it can also stream and game at the same time. Yeah, we got a lot to get into. So we're gonna benchmark it. I'm gonna show you the 1080p gaming performance of this card, gaming and streaming performance of this card as well. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. NVIDIA sent over this EVGA 1660 Super. This is the SC Ultra model. The tech specs of the card features 1,408 CUDA cores, and that's compared to 1,408 of the regular 1660, 1,536 of the 1660 Ti. So it sits in between the 1660 and the 1660 Ti. Of course, that's where it lands in the stack as well. It has a boost clock of 1830 megahertz, which I believe GPU Boost 3.0 is actually going to push it faster than that, so expect a little bit more performance than what you get there. It has 6 gigs of RAM, that's uh, GDDR6, and that's 14 gigabit per second GDDR6 as well. So normally the eight gig, you get 8 gigabit per second uh, GDDR6 on the 1660, and it's 12 gigabit per second RAM on the 1660 Ti. So you get a speed boost on the VRAM on this card compared to either of the cards near in the stack. So that should definitely help it out. Now, the 1650, the OG 1650 doesn't have the upgraded NVENC encoder for the, that a lot of the Turing cards have. The 1660 Super 1660, most of the other cards in the stack do have it, including this one. So that's definitely something we're going to be exploring. The Turing NVENC is something that's just very, very awesome for gamers and streamers out there alike. This specific model features a display port, an HDMI port, and a DVI port. It supports max of three monitors on there, and it uses a single eight pin PCIe power. So it is a bit more on the efficient side. Honestly, I think the eight pin is a bit overkill for what this card actually needs, but yeah, you can overclock better with it, I suppose. It has an estimated power draw of 125 watts. So again, the eight pin is kind of overkill for that, but hey, it's an efficient card. Just now you don't have to take off the extra two pins on your six pin to eight pin little dealio from your power supply. Just plug it right in, you're good to go. So that's the tech specs, but what about the gaming and streaming performance? Well, we're gonna get into that with the benchmarks right now. So by the time that this card has released, the 1650 Super has come out, and that has become the new, in my opinion, sub $200 1080p King, especially because that one also features the Turing and Venk encoder. That card uh, is very competitive with the RX 570s and 580s, while being more efficient and all that stuff, because you know it's a, it's a solid card for that price range. This review is about this card though, and this is at $230, in my opinion, ends up being the best two to $300, like that's the price bracket, the two to $300 price bracket. It's the best in that price range, in my opinion. Nvidia doesn't make things a little bit too easy when it comes to selecting a graphics card in these price brackets on the lower end. So let me refer to my notes here. The 1650, the regular one that loses to the RX 570 for most of the, the performance metrics, is about $150. The 1650 Super comes in at about $160, and it handily outperforms it for $10 more. The 1660, the non-super variant of this one, comes in at around $220, and the 1660 Super, this guy right here, comes in at about $230, which again, this outperforms the 1660 by a good amount for only $10 more on average. Then we have the 1660 Ti for around $275, 
of which this one is generally one or two frames per second behind in most of the tests and research that I've seen. So for $230, you're getting the general performance of a $275 graphics card while only costing $10 more than the, the version below it. So there's a little bit of confusion in the NVIDIA product stack. And in my opinion, if NVIDIA were to thin this out, it would simply be the 1650 Super at $160 and the 1660 Super at $230. And that fills the sub $200 bracket and the sub $300 bracket just fine. Now I understand why companies put products in specific prices for those ranges. Uh, it's to stay competitive most of the time with offerings from competitors. However, I mean realistically in this case it just mucks things up and just having the 1650 Super and 1660 Super cover the space would be, like I said, that would be fine. Now with all that being said, again in my opinion I, I think that this is the king of the 1080p graphics card in the $200 to $300 range. If you can afford to get this graphics card over a 1650 Super, it is absolutely worth it. And alternatively, if you can't quite get up to an RTX 2060, 2060 Super or a Radeon 5700 to 5700 XT, again, this card is definitely worth it quick I do want to talk about the temperatures of this card it's not really a full review without talking about that right the highest observed temp that I saw with this card while gaming was 72 C which is actually pretty good now I did mention that the boost clock advertised for this graphics card was 1830 megahertz GPU boost 3.0 thank you for that ends up pushing it up to about 1920 megahertz which is the highest that I saw but it did seem to settle around 1845 megahertz and 1905 megahertz depending on the game you're playing so you are getting more bang for the buck with, it, with this card, thanks to GPU Boost 3.0. That's always nice. So my final thoughts on this graphics card. The $200 to $300 price range is where I used to live when it came to looking for graphics card. And the TI series was some of the best bang for the buck that you could get. The 560 TI punched above its weight class, and then the 660 TI came along. And that would, I rocked both of those graphics cards. The 660 TI, that was way good value considering its performance. This card makes me feel like the two to three hundred dollar price range from nvidia is again worthwhile because this definitely punches above its weight class and it's clear in the benchmarks it's clear in everything that i've seen with it being so close to a 1660 ti although obviously this is a super not a ti but you know that's neither here nor there um and for 1080p gaming if i was looking in the 200 to 300 dollar price range this is pretty much the only card i would pick so if you had two to three hundred dollars and are gaming at 1080p, what graphics card would you go with? Based on the information you guys saw today, is this graphics card something you would consider or would you go used or whatever, anything like that? What would you do? Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you would pick and let's talk about it. Also, I stream every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific. We can talk live about what you would pick and you can ask any questions there. So make sure you follow on Twitch. That's Coalition Gaming Crew. All links down in the description below. So if you found this video informative, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, we always got more coming, and make sure you check out one of our other videos, will be linked over here, actually it's over here. So make sure you click on one of them right over here, and again, all links to this stuff, our Twitch, our Facebook, Discord, Instagram, all that stuff will be linked down in the description below, and again, hit that subscribe button, we'll see you in the next one, bye.